the American Broadcasting Company Radio Network presents Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy have been locked in a laboratory on the planet Venus. Outside the heavy door, the criminal mastermind Ralph Boger has shouted a weird threat. Commander, is Boger kidding us? Can he really throw a bottle of acid through that solid door? I don't know, but if he does, try to catch it. He could on the vibration field. There's the bottle that came right through the door. Smoking rockets, the lab is on fire! Hit that door, Hap. <laughs> fire spreading, sir! Fumes! That door doesn't give pretty soon, we're finished! We'll be back in a moment with a thrilling story, The Invisible Enemy. The United States has seen many changes in the past dozen years, all pointing to a still better way of living. Millions more Americans are working, earning more, saving more. More young people are going to high school and college. More of us are enjoying the luxuries of life, sports, radio, television, the theater, concerts. Church attendance and membership has climbed steadily upward, and, in addition to these material and spiritual changes, have come the miracles of jet propulsion, supersonic flight, antibiotics. The better you know America, the better the future looks. Write for the free booklet, The Future of America, Box 1776, Grand Central Station, New York 17. Now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Invisible Enemy. Somewhere in the solar system, there lurks a dangerous enemy. His name is Rolf Boger, and he holds control of an invention so revolutionary that the entire resources, enterprise, and courage of the Space Patrol are almost powerless to combat it. Commander Corey, in his first encounter with Boger and his criminal activities, succeeded in capturing Clayton Slake, Boger's accomplice and chief muscle man. As Buzz and Happy bring Slake aboard the Terra 5 at the Terra spaceport, the criminal smirks over his shoulder at the commander. Get in that compartment, Slake. Why the rush to take me to the Venus Rehabilitation Center? Are you afraid uh, Boger might rescue me? Is that it? Frankly, yes. We know that Boger has an electronic device that enables him to walk through solid matter, through walls of buildings. Sure, Boger can go anywhere he wants. He can help himself to anything he chooses. Money, government secrets, or... Um, prisoners of the space patrol. We're going to be sure he won't get you, Slake. Come on, Happy. Yes, sir. So long, boys. All right, Hap, up forward. Slake sure doesn't seem worried. No. That may be just an act. Or he may be too ignorant to realize the limits of Boja's device. Well, just what are the limits? If he can walk through solid matter as though it wasn't there, well, he can do just about anything. Boja's motive is greed, Happy. Sooner or later, he'll attempt something a machine can do, but that Boger himself can't survive. And he'll destroy himself. That's likely. But he might take innocent people along with him. Let's blast off, Hap. Oh, we're cleared with space control, sir. We've got the green light for space lock number three. Okay. Close ports. Close ports. Fire jets. Fire jets. Up, ship, and away. Commander's ship blasts off from Terra and eases into its flight orbit to Venus. Two men in another spaceship intently watch their view scope screen. That's Corey's ship, Boger. I guess I better get into my spacesuit. There is no hurry, Grog. I got to compute his exact vector and then set our own course to intersect it. Then we close in, midway between Terra and Venus, right? Yes. Here, put these on just before you get into your suit. What are they? Some kind of goggles? Well, they are electronic spectacles. For what? When we move in close to Corey's ship, all the matter in this ship will be vibrating at a very high frequency. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what makes us invisible. Exactly. And ordinary matter will be invisible to us because it's on a lower spectrum, a lower plane. Uh, these electronic spectacles fix it so I can see to rescue Slake from Corey's ship, that it? That's right. How come Slake and I never used these goggles before? You have never been invisible before. You have walked through walls, but the field was at a low rate of vibration. 
You could be seen and you could see. You sure nothing will go wrong? I'll stay invisible? Just follow instructions. Uh, we'll go over it once more, just to make sure. Mm. Now, let's assume that this ship is now invisible and I pulled alongside Corey's ship. Yeah, had a signal from you. I stepped to the hull of this ship into the Terra 5. But first, turning your field control on your belt. Yeah, naturally. Inside the Terra 5, I search for Slake. I give him the extra space suit I brought along, then we go after Corey. You got it. Mm. When you have finished, Corey, space phone me. Then come back aboard. All right, Druck, put your electronic spectacles in place. I'm going to make this entire ship invisible. All set. There. The ultra vibration field is on. Our ship is invisible, even to Corey's view scope. There's no way out of this compartment, that's sure. Hey, what's that? Something funny's going on. Where did you come from? To the hull of the ship. Benson Grock? Yeah, it's me. But calm down. Here, I brought you a space to put it on. Oh, sure, sure. But how did you get in the ship? From Bojer's cruiser. It's right outside, waiting. How'd you pull alongside without Corey finding out? Now, Bojer's ship's invisible. Just like you'll be when you turn up the field in your spacesuit belt. Invisible? Yeah. Bojer's using extra high frequencies this time. <laughs> Guess he's got a lot of tricks you and I don't know about. Here, let me help you with your suit. Yeah, thanks. Uh, well, I'll sure be glad to get out of here. We got a job to do first. We've got to finish Corey. Well, I don't know about that. Bojer's but... orders. How many are aboard? Just Corey and the cadet. Uh, the two of us can handle him. We'll take him by surprise. Yeah? I tried that once. That's why I'm here. This time there are two of us, and we'll be invisible. We can't attack Corey while we're invisible. We'll pass right through him like you would through a wall or the hull of a ship. Now, that's right. While we're invisible, we're as harmless as moonbeams. But we can sneak up on him. Then we cut off the field control. That makes us solid. Yeah, and then we take care of him. Fast and thorough. Come on, finish with that space suit. Oh, well, wait, I, uh, I forgot your electronic goggles. The which? These things. You'll need them to see with when you're invisible. I'll show you how they work. Well, Hap, we're past the halfway point of Venus and no trouble yet. Were you expecting any? Oh, I've been on the alert for spaceships. I thought Boja might make an attempt to rescue Slake. Yeah, I think it's too big a risk for Boja to take. Anyhow, we can pick up another gorilla like Slake without any trouble. Uh, say, Commander, I I've been thinking... Yes, Happy? Oh, uh, well, uh, it'll be about two hours before we reach Venus and... Uh... And by the time we hand over Slake to the rehabilitation camp, uh, well, that'll be another half an hour. Oh, you're hungry, is that it? Me? Oh, well, no, not, not especially, but I, I thought uh, I thought I'd go back to the galley and uh, get you something. Oh, good idea, Hap. Get three servings of 4J. Three servings? Yes, we've got a passenger aboard, you know. Oh, oh, yes, yeah, Slake, I forgot about him. Well, uh, how about the 5H pills for him? No, Hap. When the crew eats, the prisoner eats, and the same kind of chow we do. Oh. Sure, Commander. I'll see that Slake is taken care of. But watch him when you take the food into his compartment. No, oh, I will, sir. In the small galley amidships, Happy scans a row of buttons, then presses one marked 4J three times in succession. Within a few seconds, the concealed robot mechanism is releasing the electronically cooked foods on a tray. Happy is so fascinated in watching the process that he does not notice an even more remarkable occurrence in the galley. Two figures in spacesuits suddenly materialize behind him. Each holds a ray gun. Get your hands up for that turnaround. What? Not a yip out of you either, Buster. Slake, how did you get out of the compartment? And you, how did you get aboard? We'll go into that later. Where's the commander? Well, uh, I'll tell you. He was, uh, he was in a hurry to get where we're going, and it was so nice out. Well, uh, he decided to get out and walk. Listen, shorty, get cute with me, and I'll finish you right now. Now, let's have it. Where's Corey? Well, gee, he could be almost any place in the ship. Uh, try the bowling alley on the lower deck. I'm giving you one more chance, space cadet. Cut it, Grock. Can't you see he's stalling? Corey's probably at the controls waiting for his lunch. If the cadet isn't up there pretty quick, Corey will come back here to investigate. Okay. Let's slug the comical cadet and go after Corey. Yeah, wait a minute. Look at that food. That's service for three. Who's the extra lunch for? It was for you, Slake. And I punched the button with my own little hands. Now, aren't you ashamed? Now, listen, cadet. No more fooling. 
Take two trays and go up forward to the controls. Hey, Clark, listen. Quiet, Slick. I get this, cadet. Don't try to warn the commander. We'll be invisible and right behind you. Invisible? Shut up. I'll pick up those trays and get moving. Well, there you are, Hap. I was beginning to get a little worried. Here, I'll take one of those trays. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Mmm, that hot cocoa smells good. Have you fed Slake yet? No, not yet, sir. I think I'll give him his tray right now. Happy! What got into you? Why did you throw that tray of food? Uh, I thought they were right behind me. You thought what? Happy, what's the matter? Well, they're gone. I aimed it right where their heads should be, but they're gone. Who's gone? Oh, Slake. And that other fellow. They were in their spacesuits, and suddenly they, they vanished. I was I was standing there in the galley, watching the food come out of the robo-server, and suddenly I seemed to hear a voice say... Put up your hands. And there stood... Come on, look. It's Slank. That's right, my pal Grok has you covered, too. You heave the tray right through us, cadet. Then you were here all the time. Right behind the cadet. But we're not hallucinations, Corey. We're real. And we're going to prove it to you. In the hard way. We'll be back to Space Patrol in a moment. A big part of Christmas, especially a big part of our Christmas cards and packages, are Christmas seals, the seals that fight tuberculosis. TB strikes one American every five minutes. But progress in the fight against TB since the first Christmas seal was sold has met a saving of more than seven million lives. The Christmas seals we use on our cards and packages help bring the greatest gift of all, the gift of good health, not only to our friends but to everyone. This year, use the new double Christmas seals. One red, one green. The colors of Christmas. Answer your Christmas seal letter. If you haven't received yours yet, mail your contribution to your Tuberculosis Association. They'll see that you get your Christmas seals. Remember, your contribution is the important one. Thank you. Now back to our Space Patrol adventure, The Invisible Enemy. Buzz and Happy aboard the Terra 5 are transporting the criminal Clayton Slake to Venus. Undetected by the space patrollers, Rolf Boger maneuvered his own spaceship alongside the Terra 5, making it completely invisible by means of a special electronic field. The field also made it possible for Boger's accomplice, Benton Grock, to step through the solid hulls of the ships and liberate Slake. Grock and Slake suddenly materialized in the control cabin, taking Buzz and Happy completely by surprise. The two criminals, weapons in hand, are advancing on the space patrollers. Just stand where you are, Corey, until Slake and I figure out the easiest way to handle this. Who are you, and how did you get aboard? Not that the information is going to do you any good, but I'm Benton Grock. I got aboard from the ship that's alongside yours. So Boger can make an entire spaceship invisible, even to viewscope rays, huh? That's right. It's going to be a big mystery what happened to you, Corey. The space patrol will probably find your ship circling in space. They'll wonder how I escaped and how... Wait a minute, Slake. Better check with Bozier. Yeah, maybe we'd better. Grok to Bozier. Come in. Bozier here. Did you get Corey? Yeah, we're holding our ray guns on Corey and the cadet now. How do you want to finish them? Well, put them to sleep with the ray guns. Then uh, smash their space phone transmitter. And before you leave the terrify, open the outer airlock. When the air escapes, well, uh, that will take care of them. Okay, Bozier. Hey, Corey, move away from those controls. I don't want you hitting them when you fall. Come on, move. All right, Grock. I guess... <clears throat> I guess you win this one. <laughs> What's the matter, Corey? A little weak in the knees, huh? No, my foot slipped, that's all. I probably stepped in some of that food Happy tossed around. He's scared, Grock. The great Corey is scared. All right, have it your way. Hey, what's that? What's happening to the ship? Grock, please. What is wrong over there? I can't see the third of five. Grock, I'm blacking out. I don't know what's happening, Corey, but I, I'm gonna get. Grab Slake, Happy. Grok's folded. Yes, sir. Slake's blacked out, too, Commander. Uh, I'll ease him under the deck. I guess you must have hit the star drive control with your elbow when you slipped. Yes, Happy, I must have. What a lucky accident. Hey. You, you did it on purpose. Hey, imagine knowing those controls so well you can work them with your back turn and make it look like an accident. Now that we're in hyperspace, Bojer can't find us. Yeah, and we've got two of his men. Get those spacesuits off of them before they revive. I don't want to have to search this ship for invisible men. Yes, sir. Hey, 
I've got our hyperspace vector figured out, sir. We'll be cutting back into regular space in a few minutes. Good. I think Grock's coming around now. Grock, snap out of it. Grock, can you hear me? Uh, what happened? You're in hyperspace. We're as invisible to your pal Bolger as you were to us. Hyperspace? Star Drive. You got away from Bozier by kicking into Star Drive. Where's Slake? He's locked up back out. Yeah. Instead of losing a crook, now we've got two. And we're going to have three, Grock. You're going to help us. Where is Bojer's hideout? I don't know. Don't give me that. If you've got the idea that Bojer can rescue you, just forget it. Now, where's his hideout? He's probably got several. I found this map in your pocket. It's a chart of a section of Venus. Now, uh, what does this mark here indicate? I don't know. You're carrying around a map of a desolate section of Venus, and you don't know what it is? Well, maybe I'm going prospecting someday. Oh? Well, I'm going to jump your claim. What do you mean? If this map had nothing to do with Bojer, you wouldn't be so evasive. Cap, we're coming out of Star Drive. When we pull out, set a vector for Venus. altitude of several miles, Buzz scans the surface of the planet Venus, as projected on the viewscope screen, while Happy keeps an eye on Benton Grock. There's a structure down there between two rows of hills, but no sign of any activity. How does it check with the mark on Grock's chart? Oh, it pinpoints it exactly. Grock, have you changed your mind about talking? What is that building down there? <laughs> You're smart, Corey. You figure it out. I have. Bojo knows that even if you don't willingly tell me what you know about him, I can get it with a brainograph. His first thought will be to rush to the most important hideout that you do know about. Yeah? Why? To wait for you to arrest him? No. <laughs> no, to destroy evidence and to pick up valuable equipment or money that he has hidden. That's it, isn't it? Oh. Now you're way off, Corey. Way off. We'll see. Happy lock rock up in another compartment. I'll land the ship, and we'll search that building. With Grock and Slake securely locked up in the ship, Buzz and Happy land the Terra 5 a few hundred yards from the low, sprawling building in the Venus Hills. Now they stand before the heavy front door. It's probably locked. it would be a job to break it in. It's unlocked. Bojo must feel that isolation is all the protection he needs out here. Maybe. If it is Bojo's place, we'll find out in a few minutes. Come on. Hmm. Sure seems deserted, all right. Perhaps someone's in the next room. Easy now. Have your ray gun ready. We're moving in fast. Yes, sir. Oh, well, it's empty. Just a bunch of filing cabinets. That's where we heard a drawer closing. Whoever was here went through that other door. Come on. Well, no one's in here either. Say, look, it's... It's some sort of a lab. There's no other door. Whoever came into this room is still here. But, sir, there's no place to hide. Bojo doesn't need a place to hide. Huh? Oh, the, the ultra-vibration field. Yeah, he can be invisible. Tap the door. We're too late. We're locked in. That's right. You walked into a trap, Corey. It's Bojo, all right. He's on the other side of the door. And as safe from you as if I were a million deals away. Let's hit that door, Hap. Yes, sir. Listen to me, Corey. You are wasting your time. You can't break out of that lab. This door has to give some time. Yes, but you won't live that long. What do you mean? I have a bottle of acid in my hand. When I turn on the vibration field, I can hurt the bottle right through the wall into that room. Oh, tricks, huh? Yes, it's an amazing trick. Inside the room, the bottle will leave the vibration field and become solid again. It will crash and break. And then what? Just wait and see, Corey. Wait and see. He cut on the field. 
Oh, is Bojer kidding us? Can he really throw a bottle through a solid? I don't know, but if he does, try to catch it. There's the bottle. It came right through the door. Right through the door! <laughs> Smoke and rockets. The lab's on fire. Quick, Hap. We've got to break down that door. <coughs> Those fumes! Hit the door, Hap! <coughs> Fire's spreading, sir. If that door doesn't get pretty soon, we're finished. Back aboard the Terra 5, Benton Grock sits on his bunk in the locked compartment, moodily contemplating his fate. At a strange sound, he raises his head, then leaps to his feet in amazement as a figure materializes just inside the bulkhead. Bojer. Surprise, Dra? Hey, Bojer, listen. Koi and the cadet are searching your hideout. Yes, I know. They came in while I was finishing up a few details. But you were here? Well, where's your ship? We didn't see it. Of course not. I left the field down. It's invisible. What about Corey? I expect he and the cadet are having a rather hard time right now. Where's our friend, Slay? Two compartments aft, I think. Mm, that's fine. Now, uh, stand close to me. I'm going to turn on the field up high enough to include both of us. All right, Grok. Through the bulkhead. We release Slake, and then we get to my ship. In the burning laboratory, Buzz and Happy are exhausted from their efforts to break down the door. Nearly overcome by smoke from the flaming acid, they prepare for another effort. <coughs> I'm only good for one more smash at the door, sir. Yeah. From the smell of that smoke, that's pyronectic <coughs> acid. If we can find a chemical to neutralize it, I wouldn't know it if I saw it. I'll start looking through these cabinets. <coughs> oh, nothing here that's any good. Uh, no chemicals at all in this one. Just belts. Maybe we'd better take one last try at the door. Yeah. These belts, they're just like the one Grock was wearing. Put one on. They can get us out of here. <coughs> yeah, Bosher hasn't cut off that field transmitter. We've got to work fast. I haven't got to give my belt a trial. I'll turn the control knob until I can put my hand through this cabinet. Oh, you've got it, Commander. Turn yours number four, Hap. Yes, sir. Got it. Okay, come on. Walk through the door. Oh, we made it. Cut the vibration control. When you get to the front door, be careful. Or just still may be around. Yes, sir. Okay, Hap, hold it. Looks clear, sir. Wait. Look over there toward our ship. It's them. Boger, Slake, and Grock. Keep back inside the door. Don't let them see you. Doesn't look like they're coming here. But where are they headed? Probably to Boger's ship. His ship? He sure must have landed a long way off. He's got the invisibility field on. That's why we didn't see it when they landed. Oh, sure. It's going to be tough to stop them before they get to the ship we can't see. Yeah, I know. And when we don't want them to see us first. Hey, how about making ourselves invisible? Uh, we don't have those special electronic spectacles, Hap. Turning this belt control up a few notches would make us invisible, all right, but we'd be blind. How come? Probably because our optic nerves and the retinas of our eyes would be transparent to light. Without the goggles to rectify the light frequencies, we wouldn't gain anything by being invisible. Well, if we could uh, get behind them and sneak up... That's our only to... chance, Hap. Look, they're going to pass behind that thick clump of trees. If we can make it to the trees, we'll be fairly close. Yeah, provided they don't change their direction. Come on, Hap. Let's go. How far is it to the ship, Bulger? Oh, less than a hundred yards. It's just this side of that big Venus Oak. Imagine being that close to a spaceship and not being able to see it. Mm -hmm. You're seeing the oak right through the hall, Grock. One thing, sure, Bulger. You really took care of Corey. Look at the smoke and flames shooting up over that clump of trees. Yes, the laboratory is in an inferno by now. In a few minutes, the entire building will collapse in flames. I gotta hand it to you, Bulger. Corey sure met his match this time. There is nothing in our way anymore, gentlemen. Uh, incidentally... I will have to board the ship first and cut off the field transmitter. Why? To materialize the ship. Otherwise, you couldn't see to get aboard. And you would pass right through the hull. Oh, sure, I forgot about... 
Bolger, look behind us. Why, it's Corey and the cadet. I thought you said you'd finish. Unless I'm happy. Yes, sir. Bolger, do something. Don't <laughs> let go of me, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Bolger, help us. He's gone. Vanished. <laughs> Okay, I'm through. Yeah. Yeah, hold it, Corey. I've had enough to. All right, get up. We'd have licked you, though. If Bolger hadn't run out on us. Hey, maybe he didn't run out. Maybe he... Shut up, Grock. Commander, did you hear what Grock said? Bolger might have gone after weapons, and being invisible, he could pop up any place. Yeah, you better let us go, Corey. Bolger will be back with a blaster any minute. And it'll work just like that bottle of acid back in the lab. Yeah. Only this time he won't miss. He's probably aiming it at you right now, Corey, point blank. <laughs> What's that? It's your pal, Bolger. He's deserting you. Wow, an invisible spaceship blasting off. Well, that's the strangest sight I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, it's the strangest sight I never saw. Uh, I mean, I'll figure it out later, Hank. Let's get these men back to the ship. Then we'll work out a plan to trap Bolger. Yes, sir. And the next time he shows up invisible... I mean, uh, if he's invisible the next time I see him... I mean, well, if I... Well, if I see him, I'll grab him. A preview of next week's Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. At this particular time in our history, millions of young men throughout the country are faced with military obligations. If you are a young man between 17 and 18 and a half, you can start fulfilling your military obligation right in your own hometown by joining the National Guard. You can go to school or hold down a job at the same time. You will go on active duty only if your outfit is needed in a national emergency. The Guard offers many advantages and opportunities for its recruits. These include extra income, learning new skills, pilot training, retirement benefits, and sports and social activities. Get the facts about joining from your local National Guard Armory. Now a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are in the Jupiter City Atmosphere plant, searching for a powerful bomb hidden by the criminal Boger. Commander, listen. Hear that? It's a timing device. We're close to it. Here, this way. There it is. Now, if I can figure out how to deactivate this thing. Ten seconds, Commander. It's getting ready to go off. If this isn't the right control, Jupiter City will be blown off the planet. Be with us next week for the thrilling Space Patrol story, The City of Hidden Doom. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Helen Moser. Other players were Norm Jolly, Ken Mayer, and Bela Kovach. Lee Zimmer speaking. Don't forget to tune in next Saturday at the same time for exciting adventure on Space Patrol! This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the armed forces radio service.